Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we are talking about the Digitech Freakout. Um, I've had this pedal on my board for a long time. It's not a new pedal and I don't really want to be doing a bunch of demos of old pedals, but it's such a unique pedal I wanted to talk about it because I feel like it's, you know, maybe getting forgotten in the tsunami of guitar pedals that we're all swimming in right now. Uh, it's a natural feedback creator. And what that means is it emulates what happens when you stand in front of a crank guitar amp with your guitar and get that beautiful musical feedback sound. So I'm going to very quickly show you the controls and then I'm going to show you how I use the pedal in a real world setting. And then at the end, I'm going to talk about why I think this pedal is an important pedal to have if you're trying to achieve a certain, you know, mood or vibe. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive in. So the controls on the Freakout are pretty basic. So uh, first of all, you have this, these lights here that show you when the feedback is actually being introduced to your signal. So you'll see those kicking in as I play through this. Um, the first switch I'm going over is the momentary switch. And this is pretty useful because what this does is this allows you to either leave the pedal on all the time or just hold down the foot switch and let it kick in when you do that. So let me show you what that's like. So right now I have it on momentary. So if I play a little bit of guitar. When you have momentary switch set to off, you have to toggle the pedal on and off like any other pedal, okay? So now we have the feedback always being given. Now we're gonna talk about the dry switch. So the dry switch basically is a dry kill. So I'm gonna turn momentary off here and I'm gonna kill the dry signal. So now all you're gonna hear is the feedback signal as it comes in. Okay, so next I wanna go over the range knob here. And the deal with the range knob is it's actually a, it's kind of two knobs in one here. So you can see there's like a bottom knob here and then a top knob here. The top knob is the gain knob and that adjusts the amount of feedback gain. So you can use lower settings and it's more subtle. Higher settings, it's gonna be more pronounced, okay? So here's the gain knob set kind of, you know, more subtly. It's in there, but it's not overpowering it. Now let's crank it and you can hear what that sounds like. So you can hear on that second chord, it kind of took over and just completely buried the chord. Okay, so I usually like to keep this around the 11 o'clock spot. So the outer knob here is the onset knob. That determines how long it takes for the feedback to grow to full strength. So if you turn it down, you're gonna decrease the time. And if you turn it up, you're gonna increase the time. So look how immediate that is. The minute I touch it, the feedback comes in. Now watch when I turn this up it kind of comes in a little more gradually and I think much more naturally. So look how slow that is. That's ridiculous. Almost seems like it's not working at first, right? But it's just set to be really, really slow. And finally, I wanted to talk about the type knob. So the type knob goes through all these different types of uh, feedback that you can have. Now, I'm not gonna go through all of them. You can look that up or look at a more full-fledged demo for that if you wish. Um, I'm just gonna tell you that I prefer to set it for natural low. 
So what natural low does is it restricts the feedback frequencies to a lower range, and according to the manual, it doesn't allow feedback at the fifth harmonic or higher. And so what that means is you don't get feedback that sounds major on minor chords. Okay, so now I kind of want to go over how I actually use the pedal in a real world setting, right? So there's two ways I use it. The first is for expressive moments. So, and I'll talk about this a little bit later in the video, but I like those moments where, you know, the guitar comes in and there's some feedback that enters either intentionally or unintentionally. I just think it sounds cool and musical, okay? So normally this is how I will have it set up when I am using it kind of as an expressive type thing. You know, and often when I'm doing those ambient songs that I that I like to do, um, you know, I'll be doing playing like a slow melody, and I'll kind of pop that in at the end of the held note because I just feel like it it just it's an expressive moment. So I'll, I'll go into that a little bit later, but that's the main way I use this pedal. Okay, so the second way I use this thing is almost like a fake ebo, and I kill the dry and I kill the momentary, and I turn it on. And in fact, let me kill some of that gain there. I wanted to explain why I feel like a, a feedback pedal is so critical to my guitar playing. And it goes back a little bit to kind of taste and aesthetic. Now, I know we have, all have our own taste in music and everyone has their thing they love and that's fine. But for myself, um, I don't like music that's too perfect sounding. I don't like when it's overproduced. I don't like when every note is perfect. I don't like when the singer is too perfect either, to be quite honest. So that's why the feedback generator pedal is so, you know, important to me. Because when I hear feedback in a song, you know, unless it's completely arbitrary, it sounds like a glorious mistake, right? It sounds like the guitar player got so wrapped up that they stepped in the wrong spot and started kicking in feedback. Or they did it on purpose, but because feedback is so... Um, it's unwieldy and you don't really have an am amazing amount of control over it. It's like a moment of chaos, right? It sounds angry. It sounds sinister. It sounds interruptive. So that's why I love it. And that's why I think this pedal is important. Some of my favorite guitarists have used a lot of feedback in their recordings. And that's something I just really, really enjoy hearing. Um, you know, Daniel Ash from Bauhaus and uh, Tones on Tail, Love and Rockets and all that. He's one of my favorite guitarists of all time, if not my total favorite guitarist of all time. Uh, just And one of the things I love that he does is how he uses feedback. You know, he'll, he'll bring it in in a very musical way, but it's also kind of it's just, it's just like almost spur the moment at times. It just, I don't know. It just, it, it's human and it's, it's artistic and it sounds good to me. So I hope I explained that. That's why I love the feedback pedal. Now, does the freak out sound exactly like the feedback from an amp? Probably not, but it's close enough that I don't really feel like I'm missing out on anything. It feels and sounds genuine. And frankly, once you run that through some delay and reverb, it sounds really, really cool. All right, everyone, that's it. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'm sorry to keep repeating that ad nauseum, but you know, it's the YouTube thing and that's how you grow your channel is bother people about that constantly um, is what it is. Uh, there's more songs coming soon. There's more pedal demos coming soon. I'm kind of waiting. I don't want to do too many of these old pedal, you know, kind of quick demo things because 
there's a lot of content online for most of the, most of these pedals already. So, you know, I'm looking forward to when some new 2021 pedals come out that I can review for you. Um, and if you have any requests or anything like that, please leave it in the comments. You know, I definitely read every comment that people leave and I respond to as many as I can. So thanks so much. Uh, please stay safe out there and have a great day. Thanks for watching.